When it comes to speed training for the youth golfer, there's uh, a few big factors that are much different from adults that we have to consider. And if you miss those factors, then your speed training may not really get you anywhere. Uh, before we continue, my name is Dr. Joe. I am a licensed physical therapist, performance coach for golf, certified by Titus Performance Institute. I've worked at a children's hospital in the past, studied youth development. If you have any questions about my credentials, just check out the description and comments. And from here, let's just get into the uh, brunt of the topic. So the first thing you have to know when it comes to uh, youth golfers and swing speed is that swing speed is in large part a product of lever length. So if your child is not very big, then it is very unlikely they're gonna have great swing speed. So if you have a golfer competing against older golfers and you're worried about why they're not hitting the ball as far, it's because you can't outthink puberty. If other kids are ahead in their biological development, the likelihood that you're keeping up with them swing speed wise is pretty low. My encouragement there is to stay patient. Um, there is a three-year gap in difference between chronological, which is the number of our age, and biological age, which is our level of maturity. So if your child is in the lower percentiles of height, if your child doesn't have armpit hair and some of the other kids in their class do, it's likely you're going to have a shorter hitter until the natural development process can just take place. So keep that in mind and don't sweat the small stuff and keep them loving the sport and swinging hard and good things will happen. The second topic is that athleticism is key. So if there's one thing I see hold golfers back when they get to that 16, 17, 18 year old age range, it's a lack of diverse sport background zapping their athleticism, which is what affects their speed. So Titles Performance Institute has a lot of material on this. You can go to mytpi.com and read plenty about it. But at the end of the day, athletes use the ground well to produce force. And if your child cannot produce force, it's not likely they're going to come out with much swing speed. So you want your kids to have varied sports. And it doesn't have to be organized sport. But anything where there's jumping, sprinting, cutting, any agility movement, that's interaction with the ground, that's development of athleticism. That stuff is going to translate to the golf swing. So if you have a child that is younger now, keep them playing as many sports as they can, even if it's just shooting hoops in the driveway, throwing frisbee, playing football in the backyard, because that overall athleticism is going to help them develop speed later in their life. A third topic I'd like to get into is something I've actually discussed with a lot of instructors, um, some very high-level instructors, some who work with professional golfers. And one of the things they talk about is when you have these smaller youth golfers, you almost always see some amount of jump in their swing. And what that tells us is that, that they're using the ground to produce force. And it makes sense. They don't have long levers. They don't have big muscles at that age, so they're going to be overly reliant on how they push into the ground to create club head speed. So if you have a golfer that is taking a very stable static swing and they're just super balanced and their feet don't lift off the ground, that may be the problem. And that ties into our last point about athleticism because they really need to learn how to use the ground and produce force if they want to end up with higher club head speeds. So make sure that if you have a youth golfer, that they are swinging hard. They're taking time to develop that speed. They're learning to use the ground. You do not, again, want a golfer who's playing no other sports, who's taking a very slow, methodical swing, because that'll catch up to them when everyone else is hitting the ball 115 and or hitting, swinging 115 and 120 miles an hour in high school, which is where the game is going. The next point on my list is a very simple statement of physiology, and it's that the body adapts to the stresses we put on it. And if we put a large amount of low-intensity swings because we're practicing on placing the ball in the middle of the fairway, 
then our muscles and our joints are going to adapt to that. If we make sure that we spend time each week swinging hard, really trying to get the club moving as fast as possible, setting aside where that ball ends up, at least in practice, then we are going to train our body to produce more speed. We actually will prioritize type 2 fast twitch muscle fibers by training for speed. So if you have a youth golfer, make sure that they're just not endlessly beating balls on the range or into a simulator without a focus on speed at some times because they're going to overly influence their type 1 or slow twitch muscle fibers and lose that ability to produce maximum speed. The final point I want to get to, which is mostly a summary, is to just remember that there is a product of the kid's development, their size of their body, their athleticism, and all this multitude of factors. With all that being said, it never hurts to train speed and to train it early. You can look into systems like Super Speed Golf, who has a youth protocol, like the stack system, like mock speed. There are different ways to influence your child to swing hard. And again, I promise you they will help out long term. So no matter what your child is hitting speed wise, don't panic. Keep them loving the game. Get some speed train in there. Make sure they're developing overall athleticism and they're going to do great. I promise you. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe.